Oh, no, you, 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 you got to sign it with a turkey hand. Yeah, 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 end, exactly. Right? <laughs> all, all, all of your submissions. <laughs> if it looks like a diseased hedgehog, probably not a real person. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how to's, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin, that's Jordan. And over there is one Pedro Mateus with a return video, because if you tuned into the pre-pre-super shows and we were playing with Jitsi in the pre-show, we were playing with Jitsi, and we absolutely have not got it perfectly working yet, so it could die at any time there. Did, did that cover all the bases? <laughs> I, I, I think so. We're, we're, we're like one for three at the moment, tentatively, if we, if we, can, if we can squeak this one out. All in the Raspberry Pi. Um, but together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, watching us live, helping us form cocaine. Voltron. I had to chase a lizard out of my house. <laughs> yeah. bit, what, 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 what size lizard? Like big lizard, little lizard? Jordan, if it was a big lizard, that would have been Jordan. I now have a pet lizard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, that's how the story could have ended, right? It like, could I had to chase have. A no, it was like a little foxy lizard. Um, I was downstairs at the back, and where I get my like boots, and I went to pick them up because I was going to move them. And I saw one, a little tiny lizard, like, did, 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 and I'm like, where the fuck, how? Where, come here. And he wasn't having it, having it at all. So there was like a solid 20 minutes of chasing that motherfucker around every corner, under everything. I finally got him, <laughs> and I put him outside. He's okay. Yeah. I just, my brain wasn't ready for that shit, man. I'm like, really? Why am I having to chase that, that was me with that squirrel a couple months ago, and then it like fucking hid in that fireplace yeah. for like a week. We had to get like a guy to show up, and he's like, "Oh my god, I've never seen a tenacious squirrel as much as this one." Like, so <laughs> I, I I got the fucking pickle Rick squirrel apparently. Oh man, uh, oh I got a uh, I want a camera lens mm. bid. So I didn't. It was one of those eBay things of like, what? <laughs> Oh. You, 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 you kind of just like put the bit on there just for funsies and then yeah, dude yeah i put a 30 dollar bit on a 290 dollar lens yeah <laughs> no one else was looking for one at the time <laughs> well uh, it's, it's a manual lens uh, so i don't think the kids know how to use them it's got the dials the, 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 on it the hipsters might they might but i don't think they want to be fucking asked because they want to be able to control it from their phone <laughs> with bluetooth <laughs> But it's like a 50 millimeter lens, and I wasn't paying attention because I didn't think I'd ever going to win. But it's a full frame, so it's got it's 50 mil uh, prime lens, but it's also got like a 1.5x crop. So like that's that's this is best it can do, man. It that, there's that, no that's zoom. significantly more crop, yes, yes. <laughs> but low light. This is like f1. Point, uh, I think I got like f1.5 right now, and I have virtually no lights on in the studio. That's so pretty good. I'm not getting blinded, man. <laughs> But it does the, uh, look at that shit. See, this? it's like the blurry background. Blurry background. We see yeah. a little happy bucket that Frank's holding. It, it's kind of a field. <laughs> yeah, being a 50, being this far away from it, plus with that crop. I don't know. I was just kind of playing around with it. So th that was my unexpected journey. Oh, I installed a DAW and I pissed a couple of people off on YouTube because uh, PreSonus released a um, beta version. I guess this is kind of interesting, though, when we think about it. If you are into just Linux in general, the um, PreSonus, they make hardware, audio interfaces, big stuff for uh, concert studios. You know, if you've been to a, a arena recently, it was probably mixed live on PreSonus gear. They released their digital audio workstation, um, a beta on Linux. Like, this is like, nobody's done that. Um, but the interesting thing is, it's like, here's things that don't work. And one of them was Thunderbolt support. Because a Thunderbolt is effectively PCI Express extension. That can we all kind of agree to that? Yeah. Without too many well actually wired why, why PCIe basically. Yeah. That, that was the point of it. Yeah. The thing with that is you need kernel drivers in order to make that work. It's not like a class compliant USB device that you just plug in and it's going like, hey, you know, we got a standard for it. Kind of like the uh, RME PCI card that I have in the DAW right now. You need kernel drivers for it. One of the things like doesn't work yet. Like, ooh, PreSonus very well could be like roll it out some Linux drivers in the future. Mm. That that's good news because even if you don't have a PreSonus interface, that gives you that data point to go to the next person. Like, why don't you have Linux drivers? PreSonus does. Aren't you better than mm -hmm. PreSonus? Uh huh. Uh huh. 
kind of play it off like you do with the parents. You know, you say, hey, mom, aren't you better than dad? <laughs> I, I just got slapped. <laughs> <laughs> as you're as you're ducking punches, you know. <laughs> Jordan, you said you <laughs> that shit doesn't work with Jewish moms. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man, what, what what is the equivalent of uh, what what is the sandal called? Um, <laughs> it's 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 just guilt, just guilt, <laughs> guilt, guilt and shame. Thirty years of guilt. All right, yeah, thir- thir- thirty years of guilt and emotional abuse. All right, got it. Um, yeah, so uh, apparently uh, the city of Toronto has decided that the sidewalk in front of my house just fucking needs to go. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, Two two days ago, uh, wake up to the sounds of jackhammers, and apparently there is a uh, there's a whole on construction crew replacing the sidewalk in front of my house. Like, and I'm at the start of the street, so it's going all the way to like the end of the street. Um, it, it it's it's actually stopped just in front of my house. Like, it's I I, I have a semi detached with like the. Can neighbors. we say it's where the sidewalk ends? It is where the sidewalk ends. All right. Uh, thank you, thank you, Sol- Shel Silverstein. Um. <laughs> You're such a giving tree. I don't know any other Shel Silverstein books, uh, but I'm sure they exist. Anyways. um, Yeah, so they're just fucking tearing this up. They didn't tell anyone. There's, or as far as I know, there are like people on my neighborhood who are like full on trapped in their houses because there's like drying cement in front of where they need to dry o- drive over. Um, I don't know. It's fucking weird. There's dust everywhere, too. I go up to them like, yeah, so you, who do I charge for the fucking car wash? Getting dust all over my car. Like, uh, hello, sir. We're from the government. So yeah, <laughs> get, get, yeah. And that's how I found out the city of Toronto has decided that the sidewalk, the the perfectly fine sidewalk in front of my house, needs to go. Like, there's not any cracks. It's not like uneven. One street over, it's fucking pothole city. But no, having solved all other problems, they need to fucking dig up the dirt in front of my oh, house. Oh, look at Jordan with his gentrified sidewalk. <sighs> It is, it's gentrified, man. There's there's roads that need actual care down the street. Yeah, but you, you know you you don't want your feet feet to hurt while you're walking down your sidewalk. I want my feet to hurt all the time. All 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 I want is pain and suffering, just like Pedro. Speaking of pain and suffering, how's it going, man? <laughs> uh, a lot less pain. The suffering is still there. So you got to roll know, a tape. You, there. you make do. Yeah, uh, that 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 there's some masking tape and there's some uh, cutting compound and a collection of uh, different sandpapers because I need to uh, defog the uh, the headlights. You on didn't the get car. around to that yet. You didn't buy a kit. I I, I did buy the kit. Oh, I just bought a kit. It's right there, and uh, like there's minutes. also <laughs> there's also the um, the box with the drill. I was gonna do it today, but uh, I was asked to do other things, so the time it was not there. Unfortunately, you, were, were you asked Tomorrow, to drill other probably. boxes? Uh, no, no, unfortunately not. <laughs> if only. <laughs> no, uh, actually, speaking of the car, it kind of gave me a scare because uh, I was uh, going around doing the shopping, and when I came home, it was already late, and on the drive back, the front left headlight wasn't working. It's like, what the hell? I just replaced both of the bulbs. What the fuck? So, um... Pop the hood when I parked here, and I wiggled the connector, and it came back to life. Is like ah, okay. So we need to have a look at that then. All right. <laughs> Surprise headlights! Everybody loves them, man. Especially the you horse. Gotta wiggle them. Well, I mean, you gotta you gotta wiggle the horse's headlights a little bit, otherwise they don't light up the way they used to. It, it, it's it's been ten years. The 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 spark is gone. It's the steam. <laughs> I'm too busy throwing up right now because I put my VR oh, headset we'll on. <laughs> yeah, and and, and, and we'll I'm just vomiting rainbows and stomach acid. Yeah, so Steam VR 2.0, they got an update. Um, and lo and behold, there are actual Linux fixes for like the three count them three Linux VR users <laughs> out there. Um, they're updating the runtime Steam runtime to uh, Sniper because Sniper no sniping. Um, all of the uh, UI features from the Steam Deck refresh are now in Steam VR, so assuming it's using the same code base as everything else, meaning that you should be getting more timely updates to Steam VR and it should be a little bit more stable, should make the uh, overall maintenance easier as well. Um, and yeah, I, that, that, that's, that's kind of it. There's some better drivers, uh, or there, there's some uh, better support for some of the HMDs out there, uh, as you do. Um, the, yeah, there's, I there's wish. One, it's, it's always weird seeing meta in, in, in the notes, right? Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, speaking of, I, I really wish Facebook would be asked to properly support the Quest on Linux because 
That is still a um, kerfuffle and a half to actually get the Quest and Steam VR talking to each other. I please just make it so that if I plug it in with the USB three cable to the Type C port, it goes. Yeah, okay, I know what that is. That's a head mounted display. Well, we can talk. No, you gotta th- go through all this bullshit and run a server locally and run the um, like push some software. To the uh, the quest itself is that's a pain in the butt. Oh man! <laughs> See, I am reading through uh, some of the comments on this. This clearly confirms that Deckard is real. I, I mean, the the leaks have uh, it's been coming out next week. Clear. <laughs> next week, <laughs> yes, next week in Valve time. So twenty twenty four sometime. <laughs> Right after it's, it's releasing with Half Life Three, which will be an, ex- an exclusive running on Mac OS. <laughs> Alex Two, that's that's what it is. Yes. <sighs> More about that. Uh, AI, we're still getting the grips with AI as a society. What it can do, what it can't do, and like what type of uh, regulations and all that stuff. I mean, it's a wild buzz. People are out playing with it. Like, oh my god. Valve is very much like we don't want to deal with any of that right now we have um pits of money to roll around in so <laughs> we talked about a couple of weeks ago ai assets if you have those in your game you can get note from the steam store and it's up to valve's discretion they're like no nah, no 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 we don't want to deal with that even if all of your uh, stuff that you can prove and hey this has been trained on adobe whatever it's called this week however there's something you might not think about that could be ai assisted and that is your text translations. And that is what happened to Cosden, posted on our game dev over on the Reddits. Steam also rejects games translated by AI. Details are in the comments. So this went in, and he's like, he put a note of it. He's like, hey, yeah, I used AI to translate this. And Steam's like, cool story, bye. <laughs> and I mean, like, usually I'm not the AI apologist here. I'm I, I have concerns about the uh, the the use and proliferation of tools as a way to like displace uh, workers' rights and stuff like that. But here, I, I see where the guy's coming from, right? Like, machine assisted translation has been a thing for a good long while now, and most methods these days use some form of AI to do it. As he brings up in the post itself, you don't tell me Google Translate isn't like it's not Bard, but it is an AI. Um, it, it, it was trained on a bunch of linguistic data and it uses that to produce translations. Um, and I get, I get Valve's hardline stance on this, just saying flat no to everything. No, like we're, we're, we're just not going to deal with it until, until the courts tell us that we have a specific way forward. Cause we, we, we don't like dealing with courts. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, th- th- this means that like how many games on steam right now? have been translated via machine assisted translation. Like I would assume two. A a large a large majority of them at least. I don't know when I see something like this. Uh this general like again, I understand where Valve's coming from from this 100%. I would probably do the exact same thing of like I'm not touching this. I don't want to get sued and I don't want to get tied yeah. into some legal nonsense until the rules have been established, which those rules have not. But all this is going to do is like, not just with uh, AI art, but also with uh, text generation. People just not going to fucking tell you. Yeah, so these that, these are landmines. <laughs> yeah, that's what's going to happen. So these landmines are going to be planted for future discovery. And yeah, oh, yeah. there's uh, I get it again, much like Ben and Jordan. I, I absolutely do get it. Valve. They don't know what language model was used, what the license was on that language model, what the license was on the software that was used. Uh, so it's okay. At that point, maybe we don't want any of that near our store because if someone comes and claims, oh, that's pirated content because that was my language model that they used to um, translate that. Yeah, you yeah. see yeah, where it, it, it just it, constantly it, goes, brr, <laughs> that was mine. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, and, and again, Google Translate is is the big monkey wrench in there because, uh, like, and, and again, it 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 doesn't it doesn't play well with this very like sledgehammer esque approach of just saying flat no. Like again, what what other games uh, on Steam right now will be disqualified from this? Are they going to do anything? Are they going to start curating this? When when you start having these sort of like ad hoc decisions with your hardline rules, it creates kind of it kind of does away with the whole point of having the rule in the first place, right? I mean, if the it, rule is pretty simple. No AI. 
But again, there, there's <laughs> stuff on Steam that already has that. So what, are they going to start taking it down? Yeah, as soon as they disclose like, it, they're like, you're gone too. So nobody's going to mm-hmm. say anything. And yeah. nobody's <laughs> going to say anything when they're submitting their games to Valve either. Yeah, we're going to need like plagiarism detection AIs. AIs all the way down, man. <laughs> it's turtles. <laughs> they discovered those didn't work. Uh, somebody did a yeah. study on like whether or not the uh, uh, detection, mm-hmm. and it failed. Just miserably so like you can't even detect if somebody is generating like their doctoral thesis with it like there's yeah you just got to check if, if they have any illustrations of hands that's what you got to start including <laughs> as a requirement for, for all your papers oh, no, you, 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 you got to sign it with a turkey hand yeah yeah, yeah, yeah end, exactly. right? <laughs> all, all, all of your submissions <laughs> if it looks like a diseased hedgehog probably not a real person <laughs> But yeah, no, uh, beyond the um, language models, Valve has other legal issues to worry about. Specifically, the EU courts have finally ruled on the appeal that they made to the investigation, which started back in 2016 or 2017. And then in 2021, uh, the EU said, no, uh, disallowing people from um, buying keys in different regions within the EU is uh, naughty. So you have to let people do it. And oh no, hang on, Pedro. I need to enable Tark. No, I don't. <laughs> Whatever that is. Uh, you want more uh, ads? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's the X uh, Twitter uh, cookies uh, there. Yeah, but, you want more yeah ads? it is. <laughs> yes, but it is. Uh, yeah, with basically this one, it's the EU saying no. You you cannot uh, restrict the um, the buying of keys in between the uh, member states. Uh, They specifically said, in agreeing bilaterally that geo-blocking the operator of the Steam platform Valve and five PC video game publishers unlawfully restricted cross-border sales of certain PC video games that are compatible with that platform. And uh, yeah, there was already a precedent found, and in these cases, Valve, Capcom, Namkai Bando, uh, Focus Home Interactive, Cock Media, I know what I said, and Microsoft, I mean ZeniMax, uh, they were all found to be deliberately restricting imports between member states of the union. That's good. That, <laughs> to me, in my opinion, that's good. The practical uh, result of this is going to be that there's going to be price parity all around. Uh, and if Australia got us the refunds, then maybe the EU can get us the price parity, which would be nice. It would be a start into getting uh, video game pricing under control. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the the actual conclusion of the court was that uh, while copyright laws give Valve and the other publishers their rights to sell the licenses themselves to the software, they have no rights to actually re- attempt to restrict the legitimate sale of those licenses in specific areas to ensure higher margins. And I think this is a good thing, right? Like, I, I think um, I think the vast majority of the game profit proceeds should go to the developers, should go to the people who are actually involved with making the game. Publishers, they have a role, but they are too. Uh, it's like fucking music labels, right? It's too much of a rent seeking thing. Um, and a lot like I, I'm in Canada where shit's just like randomly more expensive. And a lot of software has what is effectively a bullshit region tax placed on it for no realistic reason. And using a VPN to legitimately purchase a valid license for that software at a, from a storefront at a lower cost doesn't really hurt anyone except for about. Um, but, uh, yeah, as, as Ven will get into, there is, there are going to be some knock on effects that, uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see what happens, but what, what, what do you think? I don't know. Uh, my first thought is like, yeah, uh, w- when it comes to like the prices of games being under control and like games are pretty much cost the exact same thing for the last 40 years. Nope. Retail games they have, I've already price charted it. And like you buy a bought an Atari game back in 1980, you're going to be paying about 60 bucks for it. You go buy a new game right now for your PS5, you're going to be paying about 60 bucks for it. You're going to be paying 80 bucks. 70. You're 70, yeah. Yeah, they, they've increased them to 70 now. 10%. That, that was. <laughs> now, if you want to track everything else against inflation, what I just said, video games have been doing pretty good. If you're looking at 10% over 40 years, gentlemen, and that's... uh not bad at all compared to other commodities let's say like food power electricity automotive so things are expensive <laughs> yes games what, what do you do with games we have options you see you can make a game pretty much cost whatever you want because the real question is are you going to give it to me a price i'm willing to pay for it that's always been the question not whether or not you're going to sell it to me because piracy has already shown that what valve has managed to do all these years these decades and decades of trying to make it easier, reducing that friction for people. And I think it's worked for a lot of people where you go, yeah, I'm just going to buy it. 
like, yeah, and just pick it up. More than likely, you're going to sit back and go, yeah, wait on the sale. I'm going to sell, maybe get in a humble bundle. Digital distribution. So, like, this law, you know, this is definitely tacking on, like, a digital to something that was a law that I think maybe I'm wrong, but the way I was reading it was clearly designed for physical goods. Correct? Yeah. (laughs) That's where the implementation came from. Yeah. The having the Commonwealth was to allow the free trade between the member states. Mm. <laughs> so, ultimately, at the end of the day, I can see Valve going, you know, we're, we're not even going to bother with this. You know? Everything's just going to be 60 euro in all of Europe. Now, Pedro, you looked up the, uh, there used to be two tiers for the EU, yep. right? There was EU1 and EU2, which was a Valve thing. They uh, created that distinction. But, uh, Apparently a few years ago, they uh, said, no, everyone gets EU1 prices, which were the prices for like France, Germany, and the other more um, well-off economically, countries. Economically <laughs> stable, let's, let's yeah. call it that. Well, this is a good thing to bring up. Now, were games noticeably cheaper when you were living in Portugal? Uh, yes. Okay. Because uh, you would get, oh yeah, it's a game, it's $60. It, was, it would be like... Uh, at most 50 euros for a game, which was pretty good. While at the same time in the UK, uh, it's just like, yeah, that's 50 pounds. Oh, that's a bit much. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was like, you know what? If we're going to do that, it's going to be the equivalent of 50 pounds. I mean, it's well, not UK's yeah. a bad example, but let's say Iceland, <laughs> which is like the highest yeah, not earning. In the, not in the EU anymore, so. <laughs> um, it's just going to be 60 pounds or 60 euro in Portugal, too. Yep. Yeah. And there's no wiggling around that. That gives me a little bit of sads, man, because like, I, I think like, regional pricing has its place if used correctly. You know? Like some sure. people are like, yeah, I want to support the developer who made this game. I don't want to pi- pirate it. But, you know, that is like when you look at the, uh, you know, what you make in this area versus what you make in this area, cost of living and all that gets factored in. You're like, I just can't afford video games at your prices. It's like a lot of people making an income living outside of like, you know, Jordan knows a lot about this living in, I think, the most expensive city, like, or in the top three in the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you can make an absolutely fantastic living. You move to Toronto, man, you can't even afford a place to live. The, the, re- the reason those Facebook and Twitter salaries were so high was when everyone was based out of San Fran was because that was just a normal ass developer salary. In, in that in that area, adjusted right? like, for that area, yeah. yeah. Um, being able to uh, you know make some concessions for smaller spots, like you, we don't see anything like that in uh, you don't see anything like that in Canada, and we don't see anything like that in North America. Just in general, I don't think um, N- it was no, just a like, EU the, thing. The the EU is also like a multi nation state amalgam, as opposed and to South America also has had of quite a lot of the difference in prices. Uh, like Argentina's and Brazil's Mexico. and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, but Central yeah. America too. But yeah, it is like North America, like, yeah, the, the US and Canada, probably far better off uh, financially speaking than. Uh, no, I want to in country. Toronto to cost three times more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, if you look at the markup of Brazil, for example, if you look at the markup on video games for Brazil, it's insane. That's why they're still manufacturing uh, Mega Drives or uh, Genesis. And that's, I think it's like something 500%. I mean, it's something yeah. like, uh, just The abstract. import tax is stupid. Unless you produce what uh, Pedro was going to say, like, unless you manufacture the thing there. Locally, yeah. You know, it was there, like. It's another one of like best intents and the outcome's just dog shit and it's just too invested and uh, going back. Anyway, let's talk about Steam Decks. We're not going to fix this. <laughs> Who's got a Steam Deck? Are we going to are we gonna, gonna talk about, are we going to fix Battlefields on, on the Steam Deck? Or is too that spooky for you edition because October is coming up, baby, but you're not <laughs> going to be able to get your Battlefield 2042 on your Steam Deck any more than you could right now, but this is going to be like extra you can unless you're on Windows on it. I'm sure somebody's out there is like, I'm running Windows on my Steam Deck. Everybody is going favorite terrible. Favorite publisher, Electronic Arts. Uh, Steam Deck breaking anti cheats, going to hit more games. And why is there a picture of that Steam Deck there? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the 
this new anti-cheat solution some old school shit, some Star Force level DRM coming back, zombie DRM coming back to you. Uh, their in-house DRM is going to require, you guessed it, kernel level access, and that shit ain't going to fly on legs. Nope. So this is already broken EAFC 2024, which is a football game. I had to go look that up. And uh, Battlefield 2042 is also slated to get this treatment as well. But the big concern here is something that we've covered on this very show because uh, we talked about it. EA flipped the EAC switch for Apex Legends and like was mm-hmm. public about it. They're like, hey guys, it works on uh, Steam Deck now. Go play it. It'd be awesome. But if Apex gets this, uh, you're not going to be able to play it on your Steam Deck anymore. Yeah, they they, they, did, they didn't, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Battlefield 2042 is also using EAC currently as well, and they didn't flip that on either. Wildcard EA is still fucking keeping everyone guessing, right? Like, mm-hmm. they're kind of just making moves, they're kind of just shooting from the hips, because like, oh yeah, Steam Deck's great, oh, we're so totally supporting the open source Command and Conquer guys, oh yeah, we're, we're good guys, EA Play, 30 bucks a month, get all the games you, yeah, no, no no more, no, get your Apex Legends on, on your Steam Deck, no more though. Um... I don't know. It's it's strange. Maybe maybe we will get a Steam Deck version of it in the future because, but maybe EA is one of those like Microsoft situations where like there's too many there's too many like business units and they're not in sync. So like oh, the they Apex have no team, idea what the others doing. Yeah, yeah they yeah, definitely yeah. have that size where yeah, like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it, like the Apex guys are like yeah sure Steam Deck why not absolutely absolutely and the Battlefield guys are like what what are you what are you talking about that seems like a lot of work. Well, well, we'll just implement a brand new anti cheat nah, instead man. of adding a DLL. <sighs> and they, they already have the separation for like regular EA and EA Sports. So it's in the game, yeah. Pedro. <laughs> I, I, I wonder. I wonder if this is just like a, a licensing thing. Maybe, maybe Epic is charging them too much for EAC, and they just want to get off that. <laughs> You know, I wouldn't put or, it past or, me. Or, you know what? Maybe they hired somebody competent at EA. This is a strange take, but they were like, EAC doesn't do anything. Like the people, yeah. like, yeah, that's security theater. Like, that doesn't stop anybody who really wants to, again, cheat in their football simulator game. Well, the ch- cheat, the cheat in their football EA- simulator to get the good players from the loot box. That's what they don't want people cheating on. Yeah. Is fucking breaking <laughs> the in game economy. <laughs> Editing the memory values to always get the best one. Uh, but yeah, the. Uh, I, I it wouldn't. I <laughs> uh, Pedro, you're the sports fan here. Go come and help me. <laughs> <laughs> no. It, Portugal it's... is famous for their cricket team. Yes, uh, <laughs> I uh, I'm a terrible Portuguese person. I hate football. I hate the beach. I hate the heat. I hate fish. Peas. Uh, I hate, uh, peas are kind of a thing here too. So, <laughs> but what about tuna fish on your pizza with with pineapple and mayonnaise? You can even your give fa- this boy a plate of mushy peas. Yes, and he'll turn I like it down. those. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that I like, but that's a, a me pizza. <laughs> Moral and I'm the of the only story. one who likes those beats. <laughs> Don't be surprised Pedro. if you log into Apex Legends and it's like whop whop, and uh, EA learns about refunds. Mm. Wait, Apex Legends is free to play now, isn't it? Yeah. I believe. I it mean, is, EA yeah. laughs manically, <laughs> and twirls their mustache. I mean, Apex was one of the few um, free games, games I of that genre that yeah. survived versus PUBG and Fortnite. It was like the three big ones were. PUBG, uh, Fortnite at the top, obviously, then PUBG, then Apex. So they they did okay with that, and I'm I'm very happy that they have it on the Steam Deck. It's not my kind of game; I wouldn't play it, but it it's it's good to have it on Linux for the people who do enjoy it. So please don't take it away. Yeah, I kind of like Battlefield. I played 1942. I think that was the only Battlefield I ever played. Um, and that one was fun because like, I like the big battlefield where there's like multiple, like you have fights going on in the air, fights going on Units, on the ground like and they can and like, like that. Right. Yeah. And you, you can, you can interact with stuff and like that, that, that was, that was always kind of dope. I, I always liked that. I would, it would be nice to, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't want to play with randos on the internet. Cause I'm Jordan, that's that just shit. too damn bad because none of that exists in this next game. Uh, a new game oh, or a no. game update counter strike two. For over two decades, Counter-Strike has offered an elite competitive experience often shaped by millions of people saying wonderful things about each other's <laughs> parents. Sh- shouting all sorts of profanities. Yes. Well known for this. And, well, there's a free update to the now free game to play. And uh, that's it, lads. 
every game Valve makes officially has a two after it. And we're not counting that one. So don't even bother typing it in the chat. Ricochet! Ricochet! <laughs> or the other one. Uh, the uh, alien. Uh, what was the alien one? Alien Swarm? Yeah, Alien Swarm. There you go. <laughs> I like yeah, how they, they totally no, forgot about Alien Swarm. They didn't even release the Source SDK what? for that shit. Both of you fuckos memory hold um, artifact. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah, right. Yeah, well, yeah. Our, our, our Artifact had like that secondary release that was kind of like a two. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, the, and uh, the Battle Chess one, the Dota. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, uh, auto Chess. Not Auto Chess. Oh, man. Yes. So Under, I've been reading around the internet. Under, yeah, do, Dota Underlords. underlords. Yes. As yeah. you might have guessed, uh, outside of Pedro, uh, we're not huge into CSGO. Pedro played it for 10 minutes, but if you give him like five seconds, he'll spend, he'll tell you the entire story. He was pretty good at it. He even got banned one time because they thought he was cheating. There, did I get mm-hmm. all the points? Good. So, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, one thing they got rid of is the one thing that we played for a minute was the Danger Zone, which was the Counter-Strike version of Battle Royale. It was pretty mm-hmm. fun. Yeah, I gotta say. Like, that's kind of fun. They're like, oh shit, we detected somebody having fun in our uh, skin gambling simulator. Get that shit out of here. That's not the type of company we want to be. So, you might be wondering, can I still play CSGO? Yes, you can. It's still there on the beta participation menu. The CSGO demo viewer uh, 138.7.9 will get you back to your old game that no one's playing anymore. So you get with the program, Grandpa. Uh, Unless you want to play Danger Zone. In which case, yes. and, yeah, you, you don't. Uh, you really don't want to go back because it's still the same game. It just has a two on the end. <laughs> Well, so d- didn't they, they added they added some new stuff too? They have like that smoke stuff that people aren't like. I yeah, thought it was a cool was idea. Added but... to CS Go, <laughs> even oh, before the update. There's yeah. new smoke effects. People are fucking angry about, and I'm like, okay, if you're the type of person, that, see, I can't. We we can't even. And that's not a bad thing. Is like you, people are invested in this game, and I can respect that. A lot of people are playing it though. It didn't die. Not at all. There's yeah. over a million concurrent active players right now, and that's according that, that, to the that Steam That is a little charts. too close for Goat C to now, I uh, downloaded it, played around with it on old Thread Booper. Took me about 10 minutes to compile shaders because this thing's not OpenGL, baby. This thing's Vulcan all the way down. And uh, using my 3060, managed to squeeze out right at 60 at 1440p high. But it was really shouty the entire time it was doing it. I forget that the 3060 has fans. It, it was a mm-hmm. stark reminder of like, this is how loud I go. And um, yeah, really my uh, closing thing about this. I have no idea how the f- I have 15 hours in CSGO. Unless it just hung as a process one time. It's very, very likely. <laughs> <laughs> so it is possible. You know, it's a, so, sometimes Source Engine games do that. They'll just, like, not exit all the way. Steam will do that, too, where it will, like, keep the zombie process open, and it's not I exit. never touched CSGO until it came to Linux. We got that, and I bought a copy of it, played it for about five minutes, and I'm like, whatever, I gave him my, to give him my signal that, like, do good. Played it again when we reviewed it, so I had another hour into it there, and we played roughly maybe, what, 45 minutes of Danger Zone? I think we did, like, at least two or three hours of Danger okay, Zone. Okay, let's say we did yeah. nine. It's still not 15. Sure. <laughs> uh, maybe, no, maybe, I, I don't um, know, maybe, maybe you're sleep counter-striking, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a sleeping Ven just gets up and plays counter-strike. Yeah. The Mountain Dew. Like, instead, instead of, like, somnambulism, it's som <laughs> de dustbulism. <laughs> Yeah, dustulism. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. They just updated CSGO. That's what they did. They didn't even pretend uh, that they had to update the server software Blizzard. Overwatch 2. Well, we, we, yeah. we needed to add another character and not deliver our promised single player. Yeah, the, the, what well, the we're, absolute we're totally hell have is Prime status upgrade? That's fourteen ninety nine. That's the, if you bought the game, you get Prime status. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Again, be- be- uh, what better, is Prime better, status better, upgrade better, better to the question stuff. that was asked? I- uh, it, it gives you, basically it queues you up with other people who also bought the game. And it gets oh, it you keeps better, you away um, from the pores. Got it. So, yes. so, so it, 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 it says right there, you get you get like exclusive souvenir items and like loot drops. So I think it's like if you pay the money, you will get the better skins. You will get the whatever, or you, you you will have you will have a better Prime. chance of of that. Yeah, can you can you get like, can you integrate it with like Amazon Prime? Can you get like Counter Strike Amazon Prime, <laughs> Optimus Prime? No, but you do get. Uh, to watch is that the, what they're uh, setting up? Yeah, yeah you, you get the uh, pilot episode of Half Life. It's okay. coming out after the boys. <laughs> Man, I would love to see Half Life like a Half Life show is just like an enti- like a silent movie. That would be dope. Oh yeah, like one of those not artsy but artsy type deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, no, we're like not silent like, the, the, the as crab, in, like jumps like, at you old style and, silent, but yeah, just- yeah, yeah. yeah. 
no yeah, talking. With, 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 no, 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 yeah, no, no, like, no. Okay. Like, no, 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 you, 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 some, sometimes like the head crab jumps at your face and you get a card that says screech. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the entire entirety of Half-Life 1 play out from the perspective of head crabs. Oh, from Hedy Lamar, yes, from 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 that one defanged head crab. <laughs> yeah, just from being inside Vince and running away from Gordon and being scared. Yeah, trying yeah, to, yeah. Try, <laughs> trying to save their family from the crowbar monster. Yeah, the Lamar simulator. Yeah, yeah so, so, so some some I am legend shit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, I think I think that does that for game updates. Let's talk about American Pie. It's my favorite. It's my favorite movie. It has, a, it has like five sequels. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's here. Kind of came out of nowhere. I wasn't aware. Um, you know, I just assumed it was in the works like we all did. And we just didn't expect it for like maybe another decade. Of course, we're talking about the Raspberry Pi 5. Huh. And I want to give this a mention mainly because uh, single board gaming is absolutely a thing. So we could sneak it into the show. And this guy, it's got the system on chip. It's the Broadcom BCM2712. Uh, Not quite as fast as like the... Orange Pi, uh, Rock Chip, uh, the RK3588, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close, and it's got a better price on it. So we're looking at 60 watt stinky caches for a 4 gig model and 880 for the 8 gig, which is $5 more than the original Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig. That's not too bad. However, you might notice this picture here. It's a lie because it doesn't show the heat sink and fan that you need to have on this thing, which you do <laughs> if you plan on running it. So, uh, it does have a funky ribbon connector for a PCI Express extension, so you'd be able to get a hat with maybe some M.2 or a PCI by one on there. One of the things that I thought was interesting, though, since we are doing the gaming thing here, uh, gentlemen, it does, in fact, scrub through a video. There it is. <laughs> run Doom. Uh-huh. Yeah. Aha. At 60 run. FPS. But to be fair, uh, the Doom Pi 3, four, by you- the way. Yeah, you could play Doom 3 on the Pi 4 already at 720p at around 30-ish FPS, according to the time demo. Hey, this one's getting so, up to 60 sometimes. Yeah, hey, no, I, it is It is significantly better. <laughs> this, this is bullshit. This is not Doom 3 because it's been 30 seconds and something, a monster hasn't teleported immediately behind you and like tried to kill you. Yeah. That's the start of the game. You get like two minutes of respite. <laughs> I want everybody to go watch if you're interested in gaming on Raspberry Pi. Pedro has a uh, Pi Boy that he built, and he's pretty proud of it. He holds it up sometimes. But ETA Prime did an entire video of what works, what doesn't. Like, right out of the gate, you're thinking about PSPP. Uh, no Vulcan supporting that right now. So you're doing all the software bit. Uh, Dreamcast, completely solid. N64 is a little bit chuggy. And, uh, yeah. N64 is always going to be chuggy. <laughs> imagine like that. that if it was more like a Steam Deck with a screechy fan in it. I mean, it already has a screechy fan in it. Put, you can put, hear it. <laughs> put two in there. We can water cool uh, it. The, the, the other neat thing that they're, they're shipping with this eventually is the, the POE hat, where you can get, like, you can power your Pi. Uh, will, will you be able to power your Pi via Ethernet, or will you use your Pi to power other stuff? Is that the, is that the intention? Uh, yes. You can do both, technically. Okay, well, that's, <laughs> that's actually pretty dope, because, like, there's, there's a lot of, like... I mean, yeah, there, there, there's a lot of shit you can do with PoE and like have, not having to worry about like having a power supply attached to the. Well, I mean, uh, you can do what I do with the um, Microtex, which is very good because uh, they have a you know your standard barrel connector, but they also have PoE, and you can use mm-hmm. that as a redundant power and both mm-hmm. plugged in. No, oh, nice. Yeah. So that's another way of doing that. In the entire time that you're alive and awaking, you're you're, you're thinking about the PoE out running to the access point because that still yeah. bugs me. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I know the type of people that make Ethernet cords, man. They're not high quality. I don't care who you get them from. Yeah. So, uh, uh, are you going to buy one, Jordan? Maybe. Uh, I, I, if, if, if I'm able to get my mitts on one, they're available for pre order now. But uh, <laughs> what, what, once, once they go, go on GA, I think Disney is going to buy most of them. Now, most of the places I've seen offering pre orders have a very, uh, especially like Chicago Electric, they're like, yo, you can order <laughs> one. You can put two in your cart, and you know what? We'll still charge you shipping for that second one. You can go get a pie, though. Like, mm. I think anybody is... L- limit, limit one per customer? I think, uh, like, maybe coming back a little bit, uh, Raspberry Pi was very clear with everybody they supplied pre-order stock with. They were like, do not fuck this up, all right? We need a win here. Because, we talked a little bit about this in the pre-pre-super shows, and 
I'm like, do I want to buy an Orange Pi 5? Or do I want to get this uh, Raspberry Pi 5? Orange Pi 7, I guess I should say. 7. Uh, because we've seen what, what happens. And we know the playbook from Raspberry Pi when supply just disappears. Who's customer number one? Businesses. That yeah. does, not, does not set well with me. Like at all, because they immediately flipped over to like, we got to serve our enterprise customers. I mean, you guys who got us started at the beginning and done all the groundwork and laid the infrastructure and the ecosystem. Yeah, fuck you guys. Um, but these businesses, we, we got to make sure that that supply chain's nice. And so, yeah, that sits well with me. No, it doesn't. Um, so I'm thinking about like, you know, do, do you be part of the problem, part of the solution? Like maybe I should collect an orange pie or something and help contribute to that ecosystem. What are your thoughts on this, Pedro? Do you care who makes your SBC? <laughs> That's the thing. I kind of still want one of the 8 gigabyte Pi 4s. I have an idea of a more discreet uh, media box that uses a heck of a lot less power than that HP all-in-one <laughs> that's currently on the mantle there. Um, I, I still want to do that. Uh, so yeah, the the Pi Four would probably be the best one, although the Pi Five is looking pretty good too. Uh, yeah, th- Jordan, yeah, how I, cheap do you think the Raspberry mm, Pi Fours are going to get? Not very. <laughs> I don't think the price is going to drop at all because no one's going to be able because no one's going to be able to I get the Pi Five. Going to be they're going to try available. And, well, here's going to be gonna very fucking clear. Uh, I was talking about this on weekly daily Wednesdays. Uh, I think last week scalper prices have normalized. You can get a Raspberry Pi Four eight gig for seventy eight dollars on yeah, Amazon. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, so maybe maybe you want to grab that now before uh, before the supplies start dipping again. I don't know. The, see, I, I'm kind of with you, Ben, in terms of like, do you want do you want to like? Because I, I, having played around with the rock ship stuff, mm-hmm. my real issue with it is that depending on where you get it from, it's a fucking black box. Yes, and uh, the the nice the nice thing about uh, the nice thing about the Pi is that it is fully open source. All the shit is in Mesa. All the shit is standards compliant. Uh, and a Raspberry Pi is no longer a tinker toy. It is a product. It, yes, it it is a product. Yep. Those rock ship things, you got to get libmpp installed. You got to compile all your shit to like use the accelerator. It's not a very portable solution. Uh, un, un, unlike Molly the drivers. <laughs> yes, yeah, but it's... I mean, people who've had like the rock chip uh, for the past two years, we should point this out. It's not as fast as the latest rock chip. Um, yeah. It, it, no, it, it, it's it's certainly not. That no, it's built perform- on a uh, larger um, node. I think what, what is it like eighty nanometer? Some, something like that. Something like that. Not quite as power efficient as the latest rock chips. No, and, and but and that's the thing, like that, that and that's like the, the the big toss up, right? Like those rock chips are beasts. They're eight but cores, like, man, if, big little. Yeah, the thirty five eighty eights are big. <laughs> but if you can't run the software you want on them, then all that horsepower is useless. So, <laughs> yeah, I I. I I would love to see more rock chip adoption just so that we have a better open source landscape for that. So yeah. that like mm-hmm. shit just works when you plug it in. Because I, that, that's we, the, that's we were talking about this, like you go to works. download stuff for like, I, I want to get like the uh, orange pie stuff. I'm like, so I'm looking into the ecosystem. Like, yeah, here's the images on my Google drive. I'm like, her. Um, yeah. Hmm. I, I ran an apt update on the Debian 11 thing for the, uh, for the nano pie. And there's like 50 packages that are being held back. Cause they're all like custom to that one image. Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm-hmm. I, I was like, can I update this to a uh, bookworm? No, no, I cannot. No. But I mean, not too long ago, that was a raspberry Pi experience. That is, that is true. So, so like, like I'm saying, hopefully, hopefully this gets better, but like right, right now, right now it's a bit of a, that's kind of where I'm at. I was like, be the change. Right. And, uh, but then again, I want to get one to play <sighs> Anyway, I didn't end up pre-ordering. Another reason, and maybe the reason you want to hold off, because these are going to require active cooling unless you want them to begin thermal throttling 30 seconds after you cut them on. Now, two ways to do that. They already have a um, aluminum like heatsink fan combo. You just stick on it and deal with it, and I hope you, you no case, but they do have a case with a fan. Problem with that, that one's a bit shouty. So what you want to do is probably wait for the next two or three months for the tooling to get done for the new Raspberry Pi cases to come out, preferably with the Ribbon hat built in so you can put an NVMe drive in it. It'll already have good cooling on it. The HDMI ports will make sense. And has, At least they actually have modded... a proper fan header on the board that's not just the GPIO pins. So oh, it does have it. a fan header, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Has, has, has someone like retrofitted a Hyper 212 to, to fit on a Raspberry Pi? <laughs> they, they make, make a uh, 80 bit Yeah, one. The, they made the, the one. Uh, I have one somewhere. Oh yes, I was wow. on the Pi Four, but then the I desk. put the Pi Four in the uh, the 
Game Boy case, so I had to take it out. Mm. I, yeah, I, I kind of just want like the Pi Five with like the giant fucking two twelve stack on it. They straight up uh, make a tower cooler for the Raspberry Pi with heat fin, uh, heat yeah, pipes. It's and got pins. like a forty mil fan and a heat pipe. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, it's adorable. Um, yeah, active cooling. I'd rather have something passive. I think maybe I'll get like maybe the four gig version instead of the eight gig version. Maybe see if I can do like a desktop replacement with these. Uh, let us know in the comments though what type of projects you have for Raspberry Pi Five, because as we've shown, like as we're doing right now, I didn't bring it up if you were in the pre-show. We kind of got everything working with the Jitsi server running on Raspberry Pi Four eight gig, and it doesn't need it because it's not even using two gigs of memory RAM, and it's at like what twenty percent load, forty five. Yeah. It, it 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 peaks to like forty at most, right? So, and that's with the equivalent of four people on it. Wait, six, one, two. Wait, no, one, two, three, no, four. Never mind. Yeah, because I'm two. in each of yeah, two and two. Peter, did you, did you get the thing? I didn't get the thing. Damn uh, it! What were you doing this entire time? <laughs> I was did looking for lost? it. It's not in the drawer that I would le- <laughs> less remember seeing it. So See, I've moved yeah, it like, somewhere. <laughs> that, that's that's ridiculous. But I want to go like I want the Super Saiyan three version of this. I want to go further beyond. No oh, eyebrows, boy. giant spiky hair glued to your Raspberry Pi. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. No, the the one I have is that one specifically. So, oh, for everyone at home. <laughs> Give me a link, man. I'll show people. Do, 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 do. Oh, um, oh, I didn't think of that. All the people watching on the live stream that we're on, did you? Uh, <laughs> up your mind, huh? All right. There's the Discord link. Jesus Christ, here. <laughs> there it is. That's what yes. Pedro has. Yeah. Yeah. You, you should have carved out the back of your uh, Game Boy. <laughs> you, but yeah, you can use it as a kickstand. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> although it, it's about, well, it's actually slightly lighter than the original Game Boy, so there is that. <laughs> well, yeah, because it doesn't, it doesn't have to have, like, a jillion AA batteries in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just the, um, it's a, just okay, a Okay, now, well, let's be perfectly clear, man. Them, um, four AA batteries on the Game Boy would run that bitch for, you, you could get a day of, like, serious gaming out of that. Mm-hmm. So I, I wonder how many weeks a Game Boy could run on a lithium-ion pack. Yeah, like the even just the fifteen hundred watt hour. Uh, you know, you could I probably get a couple of days out of a single eighteen six fifty. In my old, in my Game Boy, I put in a bunch of. That's I just remembered where I put a bunch of my rechargeable batteries. I put them in my fucking old Game Boy to store them. You're welcome. So, LGC cares. So I, I, I might try that. It's Christmas like, time after the show, isn't it? Huh? Motherfucker, we're playing some Pokemon Blue. <laughs> All right, uh, what do we got up next? Oh, Vulcan news. Performance gains. Beefcake. Yes. Yeah, this, this is uh, from supergoodcode.com. Terry, he's back at it again, uh, doing low-level shit to just blow our minds and blow up our GPUs. So, um, Terry, uh, or sorry, not Terry, Mike. Uh, Mike Blumenkrantz. I get my developers confused. But, uh, so, uh, there is, uh, there's a bit of a change uh, that's been submitted to the Mesa Vulcan stack where uh, there was a bit of an inefficiency in the driver where submitting 50 command buffers one time was faster than submitting one command buffer 50 times. Seems kind of weird. That's because um, that's because the uh, Mesa had previously a pretty rudimentary way of uh, handling the submissions. I tried to read through the patch that Mike submitted, and I got a little bit of it. Most of it is just completely fucking over my head because Mike is way smarter than I am. Um, but the short version is that in a, several of the conformance tests, we're seeing a one th- up to a 5,000, on average, 1,000% boost in some of the tests, which means that with the next release of Mesa, you can expect, <laughs> and I give you the Jordan Spung guarantee, that is worth something, that your games will run 1,000 times faster with Mesa. You mean yeah, all between... of them just... <laughs> all, all, all games everywhere at all times, not e- even yes. ones that don't even use Mesa. <laughs> that, that, that Pokemon yeah. game on your Game Boy running on the rechargeable batteries, that shit's running a thousand times faster. It's Mesa now, baby. <laughs> yeah, no, between 50 and 1,000% more um, the semaphores or millions 3, 3, of instructions percent. per second. Uh, that's just for AMD. Uh, and then it's Intel. Intel, yeah. Yeah, uh, for Intel, you get uh, between not 
uh, you get no performance improvements if you send the uh, if you do the uh, submit fifty CMD buffs. Um, <sighs> Pedro, will you give me a turn up a seven forty? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that is, but I want one. That, so, the, it, so I, 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 I looked a, that up. These, these are uh, yeah. Adreno GPUs. Um, don't care. I need, I need a turn up A740. <laughs> but yeah, it is. Um, no, it is uh, Intel. Uh, some of the no ops had absolutely no change, but at the same time, some uh, some of the others had a five thousand percent increase. So that is beyond optimization at this point. Yeah, average is. Uh, uh, and uh, Mike actually says, yeah, no, uh, it still passes the conformance test, so very good. <laughs> I, I, I very I do, much I, look forward to the better performance. <laughs> I do like Mike's explanation of the Intel, of like, yeah, this doesn't work because Intel. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> He's not wrong. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. It's like, yeah, black box, yeah. whatever. Uh, no, but th- th- this, this is good. This is just more, more and more performance being squeezed out of the Vulcan drivers. This means that there is more and more overhead because we have these games that run like shit on Windows that run better on Linux because our drivers are more efficient and will so fix who, shit. Who's going to be the enterprising uh, sociopath that like looks at Vulcan and goes, "Man, that shit's too high level." <laughs> Mike, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think Mr. Blumenkrantz is a little bored and is like, "We need to go deeper." All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, something that you can get. Uh, Deep on your face. Blech. Yeah, as your vomit, because that's what we need. Face mask for your VR headsets. You know what? Roller we need, coasters. We need baggies, shin baggies. So when you yak, it won't be such a problem. The reason we're bringing this up, because between 40 and 70% of players want to throw up. And that's a huge problem for companies that don't make the right type of porn. However, for the rest of you, uh, virtual reality makes a lot of people sick. And... You can't do shit about it, no matter what this article says. You know what? You can take the fucking toaster off your face mm-hmm. and let your inner ear recover for a minute. Nah, man. Then go do early. some drugs <laughs> and put it back on and go for a ride, baby. Um, so why is this a problem? Well, the latest figures are showing that, you know, within 15 minutes, some people just start barfing everywhere. And uh, this comes right in the face of Apple's getting ready to release their $3,500 uh, eye toaster. For your eye face and their, um, their, their eye eyes eye eyes man mm-hmm. mm, i don't know uh, you know my question is like okay i i had uh, like all right i don't have a lot of experience in vr all my experience is i'm over at somebody's house and i'm like yo do you have meat server and if they say yes i'm like give me i'll try it on whatever you have so i've played it on a couple of different systems I've never had a problem with it but i've never been in like in a game that's like moving around like Half-Life, not a, yeah, what is it? Half-Life, not Half-Life 3? Half-Life Alex, yeah, Serious Sam, Alex. Uh, or uh, anything like that. So, like, what does it take? Like, it's, it's not necessarily a price thing because some people have a great time in like a little cheap, super cheap, but once you put your phone in, they're like, yeah, it's fine. Other people are just yakking everywhere. And I think like, even with VR, it's not that big of a sample size because you're really looking at, am I wrong? About 500 bucks to get one that's not like yeah super cheap even the uh like playstation console vr one's like 600 bucks man uh i wonder the, where they the actually quests got are the more accessible ones that you could get the quest yeah. to for about 350 dollars mm. <laughs> but okay you got some time in vr jordan yeah do you have motion sickness i do not get motion sickness from vr i don't get motion sickness in general um i don't know i i guess maybe like the people who are getting that are the same people who like uh you remember cloverfield um like the no. first one uh it totally um, wasn't culturally relevant when i was 20 yep passed right <laughs> by it <laughs> hey man i don't know you're you're pretty old maybe maybe gone with the wind was the last cinematic tour de force you cared about uh but um yeah the what the fuck was i saying um motion sickness. yeah the, Mo- yeah, the the motion sick- people getting motion sickness from like the, the the camera motion from stuff like uh, stuff like Cloverfield and whatnot. Um, I, I I don't I don't know. Um, Pedro, you brought up an interesting thing about astigmatism, and yeah. because um, and it got me got me thinking because like you can control each display independently. Could you not like do some accessibility stuff to like have different images going to each eye to remember in, like, how we a were talking about like, like some software needs like a maybe interpreter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that that is peak of uh, you'll have to do it in software because it's absolutely not feasible to do it in hardware. 
Uh, but yeah, it is. I don't get motion sick in general, uh, and yet playing anything which actually requires uh, analog movement, there's a couple of uh, the free games on the uh, the Meta Store for the Quest that as soon as I start, uh, I, I wiggle the um, analog Walking stick down. on the controller. Uh, and I start moving my my entire body immediately goes Ooh. Uh, that's that is fun I just wanted you to be like and I collapse on the floor no, <laughs> yeah. so did you start I doing can, the Homer Simpson I can like play fine for about an hour and then after about an hour my head starts to hurt and I start to feel a little queasy I think the head hurting is because astigmatism and even wearing my glasses there's still the lenses on the actual headset which are just fucking with my eyes. And mm. if you have any kind of um, vision woes, VR headsets will find them. It will find them and it will make them hurt. So, so I, 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 think, I think the real solution here is Neuralink. If you just jam spikes into your brain, you no longer get motion sickness. No spinal tap. What no if you don't get it on tap? the first shot, though, man? <laughs> Still no motion sickness. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just jam that spike in your brain... And no, no anything. Uh, I mean, you put a band aid on it. I saw that episode of South Park. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the, the, the X band aid. Um, I don't know, man. Like, uh, people just don't like wearing shit on their face. Like, this is a. Uh, it gets I, sweaty. That's, that's the thing for me. Like, yeah, but there's a multiple factors the tethered, weight, expense, cost. Uh, you know, I, I didn't make a very uh, shocking prediction when, you know, even the initial like Valve VR, was it the Index? What was the first one? Uh, it was the Vive. Vive, Vive Index HTC, was the second one. Yeah. It's like, you're going to see the adoption with this modern day VR the same as you're going to see with a fucking full racing setup. Not wheels, full racing setup. Because even then you had to have lighthouses and you had to dedicate a room to it. The same way as like if you see somebody with like pedals and shifters and all that, the expense setup the space. And until, like, this is what Apple's going to try to crack with their Gen 1, it's not going to happen because you still need a fanny pack with the Apple thing, and it's got a cord on it, so it's, it's got to be glasses, it's got to be light, and it's got to be instant. i got to be able to click it in, go straight to my, um... I want to see the eye fanny pack. The eye fanny. <laughs> you say that, but we both know damn well they wouldn't be able to keep them in stock. I and know the they're gonna be everywhere. It's gonna be like a fucking the 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 the. Uh, yeah, it's gonna uh, have Air a thing for your AirPods or AirPod whatever. charger yeah, built yeah. into it, dude. <laughs> Some yeah, sort of like that back, makes back most people. Hook. The thing that makes most people queasy is uh, like the disconnect between the movement and what you're seeing. Uh, it, so what makes you queasy, okay Pedro? With, hmm? What makes you queasy, Pedro? Uh, just playing VR for over an hour. <laughs> How about you, Jordan? Uh, <laughs> Pedro's face. Yeah, but we've gotten used to that. What else? <laughs> I've I've exposed my face enough that you should um, have built a tolerance uh, by this point. Honestly, we like have, we have Pedro bodies built up in yeah. our blood cells. Yeah. Uh, honestly, the thing that sets me off um, is smell. Smell smell is what triggers Crazy? my uh, yeah. Huh. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. If, if, if it's um, it's like spe it's like specific spells smells mm -hmm. make me want to vomit, but it's like yeah, mo motion motion not really. That that and heavy squats. I vomit all the time uh, from heavy squats. But that's also that's like, that's like force induced, pounds. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, yes. it's your body. A strain. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to think about that, like speed. I mean, I, I've never like vomited, but I get like that queasy thing. Have you guys ever jumped off like really extreme height things? No, I'm very um, hydrophobic. <laughs> uh, just when I was a kid, yes, I used to climb trees and then jump down off of them. <laughs> Explains <laughs> so much. <laughs> so uh, a little bit higher, like bridges. Uh, but when you first look down like that, mm, the, 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 yeah, the, 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 the vertigo almost, yeah, that hit, that always hit me. Not like planes don't fucking bother me, but like any type of base jumping that yeah, height well, difference. Of, yeah. I, I, th I think that's like some lizard brain shit where like it, your brain processes right, the distance and you're like, oh no, stay with the fuck away from that. <laughs> and that's like the most dangerous fucking time. Cause you're like, yeah, they, but you chill. But I guess some people get like that when they like look over ledges and shit like that. Like everybody, if I got something to hold on to, I'm like, whatever, I'll hang on to it. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, I, 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 def I definitely do get that. Not to, not to the point of like vomiting, but like, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely need to like steady people myself. People feel a like, little woozy. It's like that vertigo of mm -hmm. looking over the edge and they get a little nauseous. Yeah, I've never gotten a heart sick before though. Like, yeah, I, like I, I know people get a car sick when they like read in the car. I read in the car fine. Like I want yeah, to go I used on to a read in the car and play Game Boy in the cars so. in a steamship to see if I get 
<laughs> ocean sickness. I've I've been on boats and I don't get ocean sickness either. So I want to be on a boat boat. I don't want to be in some fucking cruise liner with a billion dollars worth of like leveling shit. Where oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I would where, where, where there is the like, secondary boat and it's like free floating inside the shell of the actual boat to like right, keep right, it level. Right. See, I, I want to be dodging furniture and shit. That's a motherfucking boat I want to be on. Like you, you, you want you want the ending of Titanic. <laughs> I, I want some Velcro when I lay down in bed at night to like, hold me in place. Yeah, you, I, I you would, want you want Billy Zane to pull out a pistol and start shooting you while you're <laughs> like through a, bo- a boat. <laughs> Ah, uh, Billy Zade, where are you when the world needs you? <laughs> Billy Zade. <laughs> Pedro Mateus is a huge fan of the cool desktop environment. I I use it. I, I use it on a fairly regular basis, as in every day. That's the desktop environment that I default to because it actually gives me proper control over my desktop, and it lets me change all the things if I so choose. So I kind of stick with it, despite the shit that was kwin on nvidia uh but now that i have an amd card and i'm using Whalen, it's very very good <laughs> it's isn't, possibly isn't the best desktop you, environment i've ever used <laughs> you had a bit of a 180 because you were you were suffering in amd land at the very very beginning of linux gamecast and now mm-hmm. you're like i finally got out of that hellish <laughs> nvidia nightmare scape back on so, because lands. nvidia and kde do not like each other uh and yeah no uh KDE, you probably saw it if you were on the Twitters or Mastodons. They released a, uh, a news uh, to indicate that they have a new page on their KDE. website. Oh, that's for people who think Gnome's too advanced, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that Gnome is too restrictive, yes. Uh, advanced, but yeah, yes. They, have <laughs> they have a new page, which is KDE for gamers. Okay, right off the Fam. bat, can we just replace gamers with gaming? It, it no, can we replace gamers with gamers <laughs> with a Z, please, and thank you? <laughs> but, yeah, it... Um, what game is this? I think this is Cyberpunk. That's Cyberpunk. That's Cybertruck? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, Assassin's you, Creed. Yep. Bird. Creed. If you, yeah. like, uh, start with, you know, replace gamers with gaming, that looks a lot less desperate to start with. And uh, then you start scrolling down and you see the Steam Deck. It does use KDE, yes. Okay. And then they have, oh, you can use more things to play games uh, that isn't just on the Steam Deck on Get other machines as well. Get hype for Isle Riot! Solitaire! Solitaire! <laughs> Solitaire! <laughs> they do have that, but they, then they also have bottles. Which, if you look at that, uh, if you've ever used Linux ever, uh, and you've seen what GNOME 3 and GTK 3 native applications look like, yeah. KDE is built on QT, not uh, GTK. So uh, <laughs> gaming is not important. You you, you can KDE. still use it on KDE though. It's no, not like can. it's KDE illegal for to use KDE. Software in software. Here's KDE. bottles. Listen here, which witch. Is, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I I am the one who uses KDE of the three of us, and I play video games. I should be the target demographic, and yet all I'm getting is cringe. With a K. <laughs> all right. So we're Ice looking at a right. couple of games that we can play, man. Capman with a K, K Mahong <laughs> with a K, K Mines and K Knights, Capation, Graniteer. A Graniteer, you need to get with a program, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Graniteer? <laughs> yeah, it's just like one of all Then we got this fucking Pedro Mateus of a fucking game that's just got to go against the grain <laughs> for fuck no reason. <sighs> so, like, Okay, so so clear clearly this is like Oh, I thought this, this was going to be like a donation thing for children and no. Pla- <laughs> donate some plasma to gamers. <laughs> they need your blood. Um it's yeah, so so delicious. like so clear clearly this is not this is not landing on the mark. So I I got to ask, what other what other things could KDE try to like brand itself to 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 attract? Like KDE is for lovers. Hey, Lupras. <laughs> hey, Godot, RetroArch. Yeah, they should have had L- Lutris at the top if they were just going to go with something that uses GTK. Just have Lutris at the top. <laughs> hey, look, we can buy laptops. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the K- KDE is the for lovers. Books, I thought KDE it said KDE is for the <laughs> KDE will make you... I don't know, we, we gotta start selling KDE to frat boys. Like, KDE will make all the so, ladies you know what? I, your door. Uh, this week I used uh, KDE for a couple hours. I did. First time I'd used KDE in uh, probably 20 years. Hey, it was, it was kind of wild. Uh, not only did I use KDE, Pedro, I used KDE on Wayland. Ah, very good. Yeah. <laughs> the true experience. Uh, no wonder you're so fucking passive aggressive, dude. Um, <laughs> and that's Nvidia, not even the rough. worst of it. I woke up Friday morning, 
And I bought a Mazda. <laughs> and, and, and a bunch of spare car parts? No, but these laptops are in my backyard, and I'm scared to ask where they came from. <laughs> you, you, you open up the trunk of the la- Mazda, and there's just laptops. I'm going to turn into a weird Mateus. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I, I, anyone trying to use KD on NVIDIA, just turn off uh, KWIN composition. Install and access to the just, just real on, desktop. Um, <laughs> just turn off your computer and go outside and enjoy life. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have anything against uh, like KDE, but like if it, it was in, it makes more fucking sense than GNOME because guess what? GNOME was the default when I installed it. Don't do it. I was using KDE, baby, because I played with GNOME for about twenty seconds. I'm like, I will punch this goddamn PC. Um, I put KDE on, and yeah, I mean, if you like Windows 10, Windows 11, KDE is the perfect thing for you. Like it operates that little bar where you get to search for shit, but then you can like it, things are logically laid out, like the multimedia thing. I'm like, oh look, there's the thing. And of course, I had to go into configuration. I'm like, oh, that's a KDE. I remember it's been nerfed down than like back in the 1.3 days. Yeah, but. they re- removed a lot of the options, but it still has infinitely more than GNOME. <laughs> well, like, listen, listen you, would you, the, no, the GNOME settings has both a smiley and frowny face and two heart <laughs> buttons. I really do hate that GNOME era screen. I re- Once upon a time, it gave you a useful piece of information, and now it's just like, Mm. Or the but little drop down. Just le- give me the drop down so I can click on it and see what actually fucking broke. <laughs> yeah, but other other than that, like, the end user doesn't that. need that information, Pedro. I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've, I've been daily driving GNOME three for what, like, I don't know. Since I since I upgraded this box, should and... you be using GNOME four or five? Or yeah, whatever, you should be GNOME using 4 GNOME four. I call I point. call it I call it GNOME three. It, it GNOME is 3. the the the, the <laughs> non the non mate branch of GNOME, whatever the fuck you want to call it. The li- cinnamon, I, yeah. I, I guess that's what it would be. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I have no, another like, one lined up if you want to go again. I, I, I've been uh, daily driving GNOME for uh, the, the latest GNOME for a couple of months now. And like, I don't, I don't have any issues with it. I live my life in a terminal and a browser yeah. and it gets the fuck out of my way and I'm able to do my job. Yeah. The only thing I don't know terminal about, browser um, and the steam window, <laughs> the uh, KDE is a lot more overhead than um, Max FC. It, You're loading up the entire framework. At least Which under is, Wayland. I don't even know how it operates under X, but I was like, I had to pay a bunch of attention to top when I was testing out this DAW and like watching like all the windows being whooshy shit and like, all right, but you're not going to know on a regular desktop. You're not going to notice that unless you're like doing something like running a fucking DAW. So. And it, the, uh, most of the effects you can turn off. There are some that I say, leave them on because it, KD gets a little jank. And the animations smooth that over a lot. Uh, but the... <laughs> is disappearing considered animation? Because that's what my windows do when yes. I close them. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that, that's one of the effects. You can turn those off. I, I, I don't need like a, a hobbit's tail between that and not seeing it. But like, you know, you know uh, the, the thing that KDE does that I like uh, is it loads the entire framework, which most of the KDE specific applications just work off of. So while you have to download the kitchen sink for something, the moment you have the kitchen sink, you want to install KDN live. It's only like 200 megs. I double click on the app image. I, 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 spe- speaking on the topic like of, uh, of, of window closing animations, the one, the one fucking fancy wishy, wishy extension I have in GNOME is the window incinerator because it actually encourages me to close my goddamn windows because it's fun to watch them go Haha, burn up. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I spent like a, a femtosecond playing around with like I, that, I guess that's intuitive. I don't know why it was intuitive because I never use it. Was a cursor upper left hand corner hmm. window. <laughs> Give me all yep. my windows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I find I'm doing that. I do that on like Mac and Windows sometimes. And it's like, it is, it is very convenient, especially. <sighs> I disabled that particular shortcut of the yes. top left because that's where I usually have the, uh, the menu. I didn't like the <laughs> so... old tab functionality. That's what I was like. Yeah, right. uh, there, there, there is an extension to change that back. But yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so, yeah. Everyone go get your came on uh, over at kde.org <laughs> forward slash four forward slash gamers. All this. It's just going to be in our show notes. You two can go Cringe. look at it. And let's, get a, let's get an online petition for uh, Graniteer to get, get its shit together. No, Gr- Graniteer needs to move over to the GNOME project, right? It's because yeah, it's, it's GTO. Yeah. 
Maybe they kicked it out, man. Maybe maybe it's like maybe it's not by choice. It's over hanging out with the KDE TV. It's like they won't let me play. Then again, you also have Clementine with a C instead of a K. That one was a given. KDE, what are you doing? (laughs) And every one of these jokes is well deserved because all of the odds, dude. You guys were really heavy on everything having a K in it. Like it wasn't even a meme. It was just like uh, yeah. I mean, all all these jokes are deserved because you know, just try to install any software with KDE and see all the Ks. It's like, yeah, it's like going to the fucking The joke realm. isn't even a joke. It's just what they were doing. <laughs> I, 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 I really hope Ed Boon has a very good time using KDE is all I'm saying. Ah, oh, man. Uh, Pedro, if people want to get a hold of us, we got to run and get out of here. Well, we got a little bit of a hate, hate medley feedback. Can they do that? Is there a place to click on? Is there oh, a yeah. moon glyphs to enter? Is there an incantation that can be drawn with a half finished jar of peanut butter and possibly... <laughs> Well, if it's crunchy peanut butter, uh, you can just, you know, reach your hand inside and then smear it all over your face. <laughs> get some exfoliation going. Uh, the <laughs> the best way to get in touch with us... fuck your face up a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like exfoliate? <laughs> it will yes. exfoliate hard. It will, uh, it will but, perforate your skin. <laughs> like, and here's the, the thing, like, if you do that, but if you remove it with, I don't know, let's say, ants... No, you, yes. Well, you know, once you get the peanut butter on your face, you gotta have like the jelly and like the no, banana no. slices. No, no. Then you lie and down the... and you let your cat or your dog lick it off your face. Not, not if I do my job right. If I get enough peanut butter in your eyes, you're not gonna want the jelly. <laughs> no, you put the jelly in the ears and up the nose. Uh, that but explains yeah, why no. it's in the tube. <laughs> the best way to get in touch with us is to go to loyscapecast.com. There's a contact button you press, and there's a form at the bottom of the contact page. At the top, there's some warnings. There's some caveats. Just to keep that in mind, LGC Weekly is this show. That's where you want to send your hate mail to be featured right here, right now. Yes. I didn't do enough fields. No. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You have to fill out the fields. The the email has to resolve, at least. (laughs) What have we got this week, Jordan? (laughs) We, we We got one from Glenham. I'm talking about NVK. He says, or they say, last week you mentioned that the Nouveau leader had quit. Will someone be taking his place? I wonder how long it will take for NBK to begin working as well as Nouveau. Uh, it already works better than Nouveau, buddy. Um, I understand <laughs> that this is a new project at all. I am hopeful that NBK will eventually be able to provide the same level of support as Nouveau. This kind of does. Uh, in the meantime, I'm eager to learn more about the progress that is being made on the NBK project. I think we all are, right? Like, yeah. In, in, NVIDIA drivers are, are good from like a software performance standpoint, but the management of them has always been a pain point. Uh, uh, having to enable like external repositories for your specific distribution, downloading and managing run files, having to like drop down to like a CTY in order to actually and install actually the drivers. Stop the running graphical yeah. section. <laughs> yeah. So, so have, having some way to like bypass that by having like better integrated drivers into the Linux stack would be a good thing eventually. Uh, for now though, it's the thing we got to live with. Um, yeah. And I, NVK I, is specifically as the name would imply for Vulkan and Nuvo is OpenGL and since most everything still runs on OpenGL except video games name 17 uh, things you still need uh, the GL support so until they get Zinc up and running on NVK which I very much hope is the next step then you'll be able to just run NVK everything and not even have to touch Nuvo at all that'd be great yeah Nuvo has a very like antiquated setup in the driver, anyways. You don't was, expect much from Nuvo. I yeah. mean, you get very like, can, can I get like a screen? Can I can I get a resolution? Oh, can I get through the installer? That, that's <laughs> can can of... I get more than two hundred fifty six colors? Like, shit! All right, we're, we're good. Good. Good job. Yeah, I don't expect much from Nuvo. Um, outside of like getting the distro installed, maybe with a GUI installed. If I'm feeling fancy that particular day. Um. All right. How about this? How long from today? Mark the date. Whatever the date date is, uh, 30th of September, in the year of his noodly appendage, 2023. How many days from today until we are able to, ooh, hmm, hmm, I don't want to play this. What's, uh, to run the Talos principle under Wayland using an NVIDIA card in the NVK drivers? At 80%, within 80%. <laughs> Of the binary driver's speed. 80%. That is 2026. <laughs> We're not going with that. 
Uh, Three yeah, years. I, I, I would I would probably say 2030. But then again, like we've had some weird jumps in Linux graphics in the past couple of years where we've just kind of like leapfrogged. So yeah. it's possible. Like uh, D- DXVK was a big one for that, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, we, we kind of went from like having barely any like working games on Linux to having like 70% we of We went numbers. from genuinely like a visit DX11 game. Forget it. Yeah, to, mm-hmm. to, God, I hope it's DX11. That's the only way this shit runs well. Um, yeah, so, so like, we, we, it's very possible we're going to have another leap like that. Uh, the, the NBK driver can use the GSP firmware. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's already, that's already a huge leap above what Nouveau was dealing with. So. Do you think NVIDIA is genuinely, because my current just observation, NVIDIA is not going to seriously move on Wayland until uh, Red Hat rolls it out yes it proper like and they're like we're done with x completely get fucked and that is probably 10 years away and it it, it, it is it is coming soon um K- kde is uh dropping x on uh on fedora and when rel 10 comes out well, in, it's what, proposed. Three, four years. Propo- it's proposed, proposed yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. uh but like it so as uh, like uh, assuming in, in, in that one time stream where that does go through, yeah. um, that, that, that means that we have like another three or four years until red rel 10. So that may be sooner than we think if, uh, yeah. uh, the, the proposal was for Fedora 40. So it's for the 38 now. Yeah. <laughs> and mm. yeah. What, and what, what, whatever, whatever they branch rel 10 off, uh, because like that, 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 that's up in the air until like, they decide what to do it because sometimes yeah. they do it like what a couple fedora laces back sometimes they do it like pretty pretty close to it if it's like stable enough so i'm i'm gonna go out um not even not even a safe bet i'm in a very bullish bet i am i want to think that uh the fine carbon based entities over at collabora collabora <laughs> hit it right aurora borealis <laughs> could you just called it collabora Collabra, Collabra, B R U H, bra, bra, hashtag, <laughs> bra. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm very positive with NVK because if they play their cards right, they can inherit a lot of the work that's already gone into Rad V. Which we're gonna see. This is why I'm gonna say 2026 by December of 2026 we will. Not only be within 80 percent, I'm going to say we will be in near as makes no difference performance parity, at least with Vulcan games and applications with the NVK driver. I give us about three years. It's 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 very it's very possible. Like Pedro said, with uh, with the ACO stuff, with like Mike is pulling out like, hey, random random five thousand percent performance <laughs> yeah. improvement, yeah, in, five thousand percent or... optimization. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's it's. When you think it's about very, all the big games possible. and software that are there to be taken, because how mm-hmm. many decades have we just been throwing cycles at the fucking problem? Right, <laughs> open jail. <laughs> yeah, everything is everything is single thread. Well, how, how long? How long in the gaming industry did we see people get using DX11, bro? Because like, open jail is too effic- inefficient. It can't be done, except for the one fucking development studio that knew open jail inside out. We called him ID. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you, Carmack? Where ran the you? most efficient, best looking bullshit tech demos that also had games attached to them sometimes. Uh, using all open jail now, Vulcan. So. There's there's gains to be made. I, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Um, oh, it's, it's it's strange future we live in, man. <laughs> I mean, but then what? I, I feel bad for the haters though, because some some people have corporate waifus, and some people have AMD for their corporate waifu, and some people have Nvidia for their corporate waifu. <laughs> what, what what are you going to hate on when uh, Nvidia is a uh, it's like an open source graphics stack, and they're at parity with AMD, where they're closed source and open source. Like, who do you go pick on then? The motherfuckers like with Matrox cards, like how, how? Dell, Dell, Dell. Pe- people who Dell. buy Dell preconstructed computers. Okay, and then take off the GPU and sell the GPU separately for the same price that they bought the pre-built for. You know, people used to be. Oh, like, yeah, well, just that. fuck all those people in general. Like yeah. th- those guys, those guys <laughs> all deserve to like fucking die. That like, genuinely happened between you know when the world ended yeah. in mm-hmm. 2020 and uh, now when <laughs> yeah, the no, simulation no. rebooted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you want to support our simulation, head over to our support tab over at LinuxTeamCast.com. We got a bunch of ways you can kick some cash all over our face, chest, and neck. We'd very much appreciate it. If not, just share the show. Tell a friend about it. Do not tell cats. That is your only warning. 
We have a Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. You can become one of the weird, one of the few, one of the many, and hang out with us in our Discord. A bunch of other bonus sodas we throw all over you for helping us out once a week. LibrePay, PayPal is also there. We got one-time donations. One of these days, I'm going to open our Bitcoin wallet. Who knows? We could be multi bitnaires That's if, a like Yeah, if, if we have like $2 million in there, I'm going to be like simultaneously impressed and be like, yo, 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 Ben, can I have like yeah. uh... a... Yeah, then, 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 then you get to watch the uh, How Do I Turn the Bitcoin <laughs> cast. Uh, yeah. Amazon wish list. If you want to pick us up something and send us a little piece of paper where we got to read it out on the show, we're more than happy to do it. It's like a little free bonus present you can give us. Uh, Jordan has one, Joel has one, Pedro has one, and I have one for the studio. We also have merch to put us over your face, chest, and neck. Over at our LGC store, along Hold with on. Amazon. Like, yes. Do we have LGC chokers? Can we get like a little Frank or like a penguin choker? <laughs> so you, we can put LGC on your neck. I just, what if I could just get like a choke chain? <laughs> just, just, just a leash. Just yeah, like. no, it's just fucking yeah. chain, man. Just <laughs> <laughs> drop, yeah, just, just, yeah, well, yeah, no, like a just dog choker. Our, our, our yeah, Teespring will sell you like choker. a like, chain from Home Depot. <laughs> we put a little voice box on it and it goes, LGC carrots. When you hit the fucking floor, passed out, <laughs> asphyxiated. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Call yeah you need to listen to that joke a little bit. You're looking a little. Then for purple. no reason, it's just going to say, "Buy my book." <laughs> buy, buy my book. <laughs> buy my book. I do want to thank uh, Mir for dropping a resub on Twitch. If you got those Bezo bucks laying around from your Amazon Prime, you want to kick them our way. You can come hang out with us on Tuesdays and Fridays where we do Track Mania. Also, hook it, link that up into our Discord, and we will be there the other six days a week because that's where we reside. As always, we got an IRC. And we're on the social medias that we'll tell you about in just a minute. And you know what? That minute is right now. Ah, shit, son. <laughs> you can always find us right here on Twitch, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, playing around with the Jitsi when it breaks, because it usually takes a couple of weeks to get that shit sorted back out. But if you want to get in touch with me, I'm Vin Stone, over on, um, Zitter, dot EU, dot XX, whatever. I'm still on the Twitter thing, and we have a federated timeline where I'm just Vin over at mass.linuxteamcast.com. A couple of people, a couple of good conversations going on over there. You can find it. I have faith in you. TikTok, TikTok. I'm not on TikTok, but I'm Jordan. You can yeah, find I'm me. I'm a on human Mastodon. clock. Click. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm about to explode with diarrhea. Uh, <laughs> find me on uh, find me on Mastodon. I'm Frodo at mass.linuxteamcast.com. And on X Twitter, I'm I'm very sad there isn't an X dot XXX that redirects to Twitter. Elon, spend your money on that uh, at the Burning Fool. <laughs> yeah, go there. And now I have Kesha's tech talk in my head. Uh, but we're not going to fight tonight. Uh, instead, I'm just going to point you to Mastodon. That's uh, unaccounted for with the actual number four. That's what you get for listening to Ska. At uh, mass.linuxgamecast.com. I thought Kesha was new metal. <laughs> Prog rock, you monster. <laughs> I thought it was bluegrass. <laughs> it's just blues. <laughs> Time for some credit. Oh, man. Powered by... I guess, yes, tech... Oh, ah, George VPN. Okay. <laughs> hey. I think technically that box does have a VPN on there, so you could connect to it. <laughs> we got to thank our, uh, our lovely advisors. We got to thank Omegas. Our Theron and our executive producers, Barb Ramp, Scott Michaud, the top guest, Mike G, drummer, Tomas, Shaquem, Dave, Ishep, Ian, and our Chicago Kicks ass, Super Limlick Fence, Super Dusto, Empty, Glorious Egg Roll, and Nubin. Sea Monsters, Renault, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Vertanuda, Justin Nubin, Darkwing, System T, Densing Joe, Ogi, One, and Kyrillo. With the Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marcin, Ray, Leonardo, the Crazy, they're behind Kim, seven cheerlings. Chris, Steven, Jill, Benjamin, do do that. Alex, once. all of all of our cheerlings. Dirty Dean, Xanthorus Gaming, Rue, Turnover, and of course our fun aromatic devils. Like oh, there was a row there. Here and get to all these knuckles: Johnny, Shep, Gamatron, you know, Ideas, and Joe, aromatic dev, and of course Kai Linux. You are all truly wonderful. We would like to thank you for your service, as always. Hashtag LGC cares, and most importantly. For your genetic material that we've taken from you. Dynafire. Non-consensually. 
See, Clowns. this is your problem. <laughs> Pedro, that's your problem. You always walk up to somebody and you're like, do you mind if I non-consensually take some of your DNA? And they're like, it's so weird they give it to you. <laughs> and, then, and, and then you just pluck one of their hairs out and you walk away. <laughs> then he, then, then, then he just you. French kisses them and runs away. Gives, gives them a little butt squeeze too, just for that <laughs> Five dudes.